Doma Sports Talk Worldwide with some news from the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. Now, in the world of boxing, you know, uh, you got really one name dominating boxing. I think everybody knows. Uh, we're going to eat him. You know what I mean? You know, I done told y'all it's one word for him. is whatever. I've been telling you for the longest, uh, you know, and, um, you know, you put someone who needs to be in the middle and put drugs in them, you're going to get this explosion. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's explosion or implosion, however you want to see it. So we ain't going to even name that to be remain nameless here for a minute. Now, Bam Bam Rodriguez, right? Now, it's been about a, a damn near week, but Bam Bam Rodriguez uh, beat Estrada uh, with the body blow, right? And um, now we're talking about where's Bam Bam Rodriguez on the pound for pound list? So, some pound for pound list has got Bam Bam Rodriguez at number five. Now, I want to tell you guys what my thought pattern was. First, when I seen him at number five, I'm going to be honest with y'all. That's why I'll be doing this. I'm like, hell no. You ain't going to just, you know, just get number five like that. You know what I mean? You just ain't going to get number five like that. Right? Um, and, I, you know, my thought pattern was like, look, these Mexican fighters, you know, it's a different kind of league they get to deal with. Right? They get some special treatment all the time. And I'm, you know, I've done, I done documented. I'm just going to say some quick, just treat what I mean. You know, you got Mexican fighters, and, and probably the only ones, really, that will become mandatories. You know, when you, you know, mandatory, when you become a mandatory challenger, what is your goal then? You know, you've worked your way to mandatory, then you want to fight the champion. Not Mexicans, you know, right? You, know, you can't generalize, but it's just way too many of them that just continue to do that. Canelo Alvarez, mandatory for Demetrius Andre, said, hell no. They stripped Demetrius Andre he, and put, give Leon Smith the title. He fights Leon Smith. This is at 154. Uh, Jaime Munguia, the mandatory for Demetrius Andre at 163, said, I'm just not doing it. Just ain't. I'm just not. And then he fights all kind of other people. Matter of fact, and then he gets a Canelo fight. Demetrius Andre doesn't. Um, Ryan Garcia. Damn it, we got to say his name. I didn't want to was the mandatory for Devin Haney. He started talking about Javante Davis and other people. Didn't ever have to fight him, right? So those, you know, those are the kind of things that keep happening. Uh, Virgil Ortiz, right? He was the mandatory for Terrence Crawford. Could have been fought him. Wanted to go fight for a lesser regular title against Stanley Onis, or I think it was. You know, those are awesome Mexican guys. What, don't you think Virgil Ortiz is awesome? Mungi is pretty good, damn good. Canelo Alvarez, don't y'all consider him one of the best ever? Right? And who else? I mean, Ryan Garcia, if he wasn't doped, you know, you was you, you all hyped about him. Those are good guys. They were all mandatories who decided, you know, that guy right there, that Devin Haney guy, that Demetrius Andre guy, right? Ah, uh, that Terrence Crawford guy. Ah, uh, we don't have to do that. We'll go the other route and nobody never mentioned it. Those kind of things irked me. Not to mention them, eliminator fights, you know, stuff like that, where Ramirez just said, you know, I ain't fighting no damn region pro grades. I'm just not going to do that. Or uh, um, uh, what's the guy now with everybody, um, Pitbull Cruz? He's he got an eliminator against Shakur Stevenson. You guys do know that. He just said, I'm just, I'm just not doing that. I'm just not. And he's allowed to not do that. And we don't have to mention Canelo Alvarez, who's just, I have mandatories and... And David Morrell, over two years, WBA regular champion, who then their regular champion, they're trying to consolidate their belts at 100, uh, uh, the WBA. They don't want no more regular champions. Just said, no, David Morrell's too good. I'm not fighting him. Uh, David Benavides, my champion at WBC, over two years, just not going to fight him. I'm going to pick around them, and I'm going to be okay with it. So when you know that, and you follow boxing a little bit to where you're like, oh, that's ridiculous. You know, I don't see no brothers doing that. Yeah, you know, I, I just, I, 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 and I've been asking, black mandatory challenger who just decides that guy at the champion is too good and I'm going to go around the beat around the bush and don't fight him. That first. But then put on top of it, now beat around the bush and they'll call me better than the guy that I decided not to fight. Give me one. I'll Cat Williams you. Don't worry, I'll wait. So when you have that and you hear Bam Bam Rodriguez beats, uh, um, a 
Estrada, who's older with a body blow, and he's number five pound for pound, what would your reaction be with that information I just gave you? It's like hell to the no. But we're Doma here. This Doma sports talk. We're objective. Whether we like somebody, we're not. Whether something's unjust or not, we're talking about this guy. Just Bam Bam Rodriguez. Now, here's your arguments for Bam Bam Rodriguez being number five pound for pound. First argument is he can't be the, the top four because those places are basically took by some awesome people. Four, Demetri Bivol. I don't really got to say too much more. You ain't get messed with Bivol. You know what I'm saying? First of all, Canelo Alvarez is to explain that to you why we can't talk about Bivol, right? Hey, some people got this guy, Inui, at number one. You know, because he's handling his business down there. Inui is an is a, a extraordinary talent, right? So he can't have that spot. Inui done went up a couple of weight divisions and handled his business. And he beat that Stephen Fult Fulton, who we thought was going to give him more trouble than he did, didn't we? Can't say after the fight that Fulton wasn't all that. Boom. Inui, number three. This is my power I'm talking about. Number two and number one, interchangeable. I'm going to go with Alexander Uzik at number two. Living legend. Living legend. What do we got to think talk about? Undisputed at, num at uh, Cruiserweight and went to everybody's backyard to beat them. Went to their barbecue, beat the dude up that was hosting it in their backyard. And their family said, hey, we like you, so you can stay here for a while. Beat everybody in their backyard. I ain't going to name them this time. This is the first time I've mentioned him, and I ain't going to name the names. But everybody in their backyard at Cruiserweight. Went up to heavyweight with no punch power and became undisputed heavyweight champion. Need I say more? Two division undisputed. The guy that's number one is Terrence Bud Crawford. <laughs> ain't fought in a year, but like I tell you, he's actively inactive because ain't nobody. There was the dudes who was supposed to be fighting him in his fourth weight division. Kind of ain't wanting him to really do it. If it was Jamal Char Jamel Charlo who was, you know, just there, he wasn't in a rush to do it. Then you had the Fendora Chu winner. Uh, was supposed to do it, and they was they got that fight got sanctioned with the uh, with the, the, where they were supposed to fight uh, Terrence Crawford, and they were all acting funny. And this is Chu, and you know Chu is somebody who's menacing, right? They one they ain't wasn't in a rush. You know, they, one of them got a cut, the other one they ain't trying to have it. So you know, ain't nobody else trying to fight him in 154. So he's gonna fight Majimov. But as of right now, Terrence Crawford got to be number one because he's the first two division undisputed guy. Right and uh, beating Errol Spence is, is is ridiculous, and how he did it. There's a lot of distance there. Uzik did beat T uh, Tyson Fury, which is a huge, big old guy, but it wasn't that much distance, right? So, but they're interchangeable. You can argue either one. So those four spots are basically taken. Now number five, right? Bam Bam Rodriguez, who you know, I just make want to make this sure he's done some stuff that others haven't done, and what I mean by that is this. You know, before Bam Bam Rodriguez really hit the scene, right in those areas, that 115, 118 area, right? You had 112, maybe we'll go down there. You had Roman Gonzalez, who they was putting at number one pound for pound. Quadris, who was causing trouble for everybody. Sorovitsai, remember him? Yeah, I asked Roman Garcia uh, Chocolito about him. And, and then Estrada. Right? You had those four. What was they calling them? They was calling them the four kings or something. Many kings or something they was calling them. Them four. Now, your boy, Bam Bam, beat Quadras, beat Sor Rungvisai, and now beat Estrada. Now, let's just pick Canelo, for example, who ain't going to be number five because has, Canelo has never, ever done something like that. In any division... Well, he was, beat the top three or four guys. Just doesn't do it. Look, right now, the 168. Let's just start at 168. He's beating Billy Joe Saunders. Who I'll put him in the top four. He's beating Kyla Plant. I'll put him there. But, you know, neither one of them are close, and we all know it, to David Morrell and David Benavides. Right? You see what I'm saying? How can you have a David Benavides and David Morrell right in your division? When you was at 154... Right, Canelo, when he snuck and got that, that title, Demetrius Andre was WBO, WBC and IBF, I think, were, was held by Jamel and Jamal Charlo. And neither one of them you fought. 
and you snuck out 154. At 160, there was Demetrius Andre for Undisputed. And then uh, your, your boy, um, Janati Golovkin, y'all saw how those two fights went, right? So, I mean, Canelo was never, I'm the best one in my division, ever, right? So that's something Bam Bam Rodriguez already has done. So I'm saying, you know, there is a big argument for uh, Bam Bam Rodriguez because Javante uh, Davis, the same thing. It's the same thing at, at lightweight, 135. You know, everybody was there. Shoot, Javante Davis had another undisputed guy in his division with Devin Haney. Teofimo Lopez was there. Uh, Vasil Lomachico was there. You know what I'm saying? How did you have all that legendary stuff there and you supposed to be some face of boxing? Hell no. So Bam Bam, Bam 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 go in front of Canelo and Javante Davis. Now we got some more talented people out there. You know, you got a Boots Endis back there. You got a um, Shakur Stevenson back there, right? And a couple of names I, I'm not really familiar with that could be in there. But, you know, no high profile fights that would put them. So Bam Bam, uh, there's no really a big argument for somebody else to be number five. Only one that I would say is Better Be Of. Because Better Be Of... It's 20 and 0 with 20 knockouts. You know what I'm saying? That, and, and it's not like he ain't fighting nobodies. It's just, I'm just knocking them out and y'all call them nobodies because they got knocked the hell out. He's the only one I can have an argument for. But he still has a, a Bivol issue. The winner of him and Bivol is going to be the, you know, the main guy. But Bivol is number four. Better BF could be number five. Bam Bam could be number six. That's the only argument. Other than that, Vamanos, Bam Bam. Bam Bam is handling his damn, his damn uh, business, you know? So uh, after all that negativity and thinking that he shouldn't have be number five pound for pound, you know, hey, there's arguments for him to be. So damn it, Bam Bam at number five pound for pound. And hey, we're going to deal with that one. Let's see what happens going forward. Better be of, you know, is the only one that I can argue with. Maybe you guys will come up with a couple of others that we can argue with. But but um, my arguments that I started with, you know, with the Mexican thing, you know, they do get away with stuff. I ain't going to back off of that. Y'all see it. If, I, if anything not factual, holla. But it is. And we can't have mandatory challengers getting to a position and being able to avoid taking the, the, the uh, championship fight. If so, all I'm asking is for them to move down in the ranking and let the guy behind them fight the champion. Because, see, this is what you guys are not realizing. Those champions, they're never getting opportunities. You know, when they become champions, you do know that they've trained in their whole lives, too. And these big, high-profile fights against these high-profile mandatories, they're just not fighting them and going beating around the bush. Those guys are never getting those opportunities, like ever, in their life. And it's, so when somebody's not going to fight them, then there should be some kind of penalty for not fighting them, not a reward. So that's what that's all about. But at the end of the day, bam, 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 for number five pound for pound. What you think? Dope Sports Talk Worldwide. And I'm up out of here.